the in women with POI. I have no conflict of interest. Diminished ovarian reserve is the major problem we face today in our clinics, mainly because women have decided to delay the age at which they start childbearing. We can also find diminished ovarian reserve in young women. This would be poor ovarian responders and a more severe pathology that would be premature ovarian insufficiency or POI. There have been many therapeutic alternatives to try to increase the number of follicles in these patients, but none have proven to be effective. This, this is why we focused our attention in the number of resting follicles present in, patient, in patients with POR, POI, and even menopausal women. This can be successfully rescued if the um, appropriate night is provided. To test our hypothesis, we created a pilot study in animals. We gave high doses to animals to try to mimic POI patients and low doses of chemotherapy to try to mimic POR patients. Then we infused human or marrow derivatives themselves. This showed an increase in follicular development, an increased number of metaphase II oocytes, an increased number of embryos, and as long-term results we observed, a restored long-term spontaneous fertility with an increased ovarian vascularization and a proliferation, pro proliferation and a reduction of apoptosis. These results were all also validated in human ovarian tissue from poor ovarian responders. So these outstanding results inspired us to move into real women. And this is why we carried out a pilot study with 20 POR patients according to the ASHRAE criteria. These patients received an autologous stem cell ovarian transplantation in one of the ovaries, as the other ovary served as the control. These results were already presented in ASHRAE 2018, but as a brief summary, we enhanced ovarian reserve biomarkers in 74% of patients. Antrofollicular count increased two weeks after the intervention, probably because the rescue of secondary follicles. This increase in ovarian reserve biomarkers was related with an increase in soluble growth factors, fibroblast growth factor 2 and thrombospondin 1. All this resulted in more follicles, metaphase 2 oocytes, and an increased number in embryos developed. The truth is that the OPD rate was 18% because we did not modify the embryo quality. In total, we generated six pregnancies, three after IVF and three spontaneous, with three live births. So next step would be premature ovarian insufficiency patients. Bone marrow derived stem cells release soluble growth factors and stimulate the regeneration of the ovarian niche. And therefore, growth and development of primordial follicles. After the increase in soluble growth factors in poor ovarian responders and the positive correlation with ovarian reserve biomarkers, we wanted to investigate if only stem cell mobilization would generate the same positive effect. So after, after these promising results, we focused our attention in POI patients and created a SCOT2 study. These were 20 patients randomized into two groups according to the ESHRA criteria. These are the inclusion criteria, but most importantly, they were under 38 years old because we wanted to decrease the high inequality rate that we found in our previous study. We divided patients into two arms. First arm, the mobilization group, received a five-day treatment of GCSF subcutaneously and stem cells were remaining circulated in peripheral blood with no intervention made. The ASCOT arm uh, also received the GCSF treatment and then cells were uh, collected by a pharesis and infused into one of the ovarian arteries. Patients were followed up to six months every two weeks evaluating menses recovery, FSH and estradiol levels, endocrine function, and ovarian reserve biomarkers. Whenever antrofollicular count increased one or more follicles, 
a control variant stimulation was started. To date, 10 POI women are included, but the study had to be interrupted because of the global COVID-19 pandemic. Basal characteristics show that all women were below 35 years old. They had high FSH levels, low AMH levels, low antifollicular count, low estradiol, and most of them had hot flashes as their main symptom. The criteria of success was an increase in antifollicular count of one or more follicles and a, or an AMH increase. According to this criteria of success, the antifollicular count was increased in 70% of patients. Also, we saw a positive response to, bone, to stem cells in 60%. As we can see in this graph, the increase in antifollicular count was mostly after the 30th day after the stem cell treatment, probably we hypothesized because the recruitment of primordial follicles. Also, FSH levels decreased in 60% of patients. And most importantly, three women, two from the mobilization group and one from the aspect group, group presented a decrease in the FSH levels to half of the basal levels. When analyzing the IBF cycles, we started a controlled ovarian stimulation in six of the 10 patients recruited, four from the ASCOT arm and two from the mobilization arm. In total, 16 cycles were initiated, which means that the double of cycles were initiated after the stem cell treatment. This is probably because after the treatment, we found more, um, more antrophollicles successful to be simulated, and these patients previously didn't have any uh, follicles. The follicular puncture rate per cycle initiated, initiated was doubled, while the cancellated rate per cycle initiated was halved. But most importantly, we retrieved four metaphase two oocytes, which turned into two embryos, one from each arm, which proves that both arms of the study are as equally effective, and one pregnancy in a Scott arm, which is today 38 weeks and ongoing. When analyzing vasomotor symptoms, they improved in 50% of women, but most importantly, 40% of them recovered menses during the follow-up and two patients reported a sp spontaneous menses after the follow-up period, probably also because of recruitment of the primordial follicles. So to conclude, antrophollicles were monitored after treatment in both arms, allowing IVF cycles even by only stem cell mobilization, which means that both arms are equally effective. The follicle wave growth was mainly detected more than 30 days after ASCOT, and we hypothesized that this was probably because of the rescue of primordial follicles. It takes more than five months from primordial follicles to grow and to antral stage. So this is why maybe if we increase the follow-up period to more than six months, we will allow these primordial follicles to reach the central stage. FSH levels were significantly decreased, but it wasn't recorded, although the decrease in FSH levels was observed in 60% of the patients. Ovarian stimulation was initiated in 60% of women, six women, and with this, two embryos were obtained, one from each arm of the study. Embryo transfer was successfully performed in these two women, one of each arm, and there's one ongoing pregnancy in the ASCOT arm, which is today 38 weeks pregnant. Hot flashes and vaginal dryness menopausal symptoms improved in 50% and menses were recovered in 40% of recruited patients. Thank you.